In fact, she goes. Former Wall Street Journal reporter Leslie Chang unravels the stories of young women working in the southeastern factory town of Dongguan, just north of Hong Kong. The story follows Ming and Chun Ming, who share their perspectives and feelings. The young migrants, who are often represented as a faceless mass, become intricate and ambitious personalities through Chang's reporting. The experiences embody the rapidly changing China. So the book Factory Girls has recently been published in Simplified Chinese, almost four years after it was first published in English. So, but even today, you know, when China is still rapidly changing. The book still feels real and relevant, and how did you achieve it? I mean, to give this book some timeless value that transcends time and place.、Uh, yeah, well, I hope I hope it is timeless.、Um, <laughs> I think that in the course of the reporting, initially I started just thinking I want to write about some factory girls, young women who work in factories. But in the course of the reporting, I found that this was a story not just about their working conditions, but about their lives. Um, their hopes and their dreams, their whole emotional world,、um, and I think this kind of thing does not go out of date. For example, the ways they deal with their friends, or the way they make boyfriends and girlfriends, or the kind of conflicts they have with their parents as they're growing up. I mean, these are things that we can all relate to, even if we're from a very different background.、Um, so I think because of this, these things,、um, these kind of universal emotions and ideas, have lasting value because、uh, they're not things that change, even though, for example, the working conditions or the wages. In Dongguan, can change from year to year, but these larger things are always、um, applicable. And in Chinese, the word migrant literally means farmer turned worker, which is not necessarily true,、mm-hmm. particularly for the young generation of migrants who、um, go straight for work after graduation from middle school, high school. So, what do you think of such? Or yeah, I, I think that a lot of the terminology that we use to talk about migrants is outdated and gives us a stereotype of what the migrants are like.、Um, for example, the term that you use, you know, farmer turned worker, nomming gong,、mm-hmm. um, that suggests that they were initially a farmer. But as you say, this generation of migrants, yes, they're from rural China, but mostly their experience has been. Going to school and then going out to work. So when by the time they get to the city, they're already not that far from being an urban person because their experience has been being living in a small town and being in a school environment and not working on a farm.、Um, so another phrase that you often、uh, heard is you know the migrant population and and floating population. Yeah, and this this gives you an idea that the migrants are very aimless and floating and possibly dangerous or unstable. It just carries a lot of negative connotations. But what I found, and what a lot of scholars have found, is that in fact migrants leave home with a very clear idea of where they want to go. They know a person, they know a, a relative or a neighbor or a family friend who's working in a factory, and then they'll go and work in the same factory. And over two decades ago,、um, the elder generation of migrants went to cities for work mainly to make money. But it seems that that cannot apply to the the youngsters from rural China who migrate to cities. So what do you think? Are some of their purpose? Yeah, it's interesting.、Um, they, you know, they did a lot of studies about migrants and why they go out from home. And of course, earning money is a big reason that they go out from home、um, because often their their families have very little income from year to year.、Um, but what was really interesting is they gave migrants a lot of choices in answering these questions. And a lot of the reasons that the migrants chose were to see the world,、mm-hmm. to improve myself, to learn new skills, to find a better life. You know, so. They see the move to the city as a way to change their own fates and to take charge of their own futures. And migration used to be a shame for some of the migrants, but now it seems like they stay at home for them is kind of a shame. Yeah, initially, you know, back in the '80s when this way first started, I talk a lot to a lot of people who went out in those early days,、mm-hmm. and they said it was seen as something very risky or very dangerous, especially for women. They would say, you know, for a young woman who's not married to go out is is shameful or dangerous, or she might. Hurt her reputation, you know,、um, just by going to the city. But over the past twenty years, migration has basically become a rite of passage for young people from rural China, and it's basically accepted that after you basically finish your schooling, whether it's high school or vocational school or middle school,、um, you just go out with everyone else and you go find your own way in the city. You went home with Ming during a spring festival, and what what are some of the differences you felt about living in a Chinese city and a village? Yeah, it was really interesting. I went with、uh, Qinmin, one of the girls I write about, to her home in Hubei for the Chinese New Year, and the first thing that struck me was just the way 
village life is communal. Everything is done as a group. You know, you you eat every meal as a group. You stand in a row and brush your teeth as a group. You know, when when people take a bath, they, they it's a big deal to bring all the water and boil the water. So everyone takes a bath one after another. That's kind of a group activity. Um, and at night, uh, all the women slept because there were so many kids and and, and relatives visiting. All the all the girls slept, you know, side by side on this big bed, and and all the boys and the men slept on, you know, one or two big beds. Um, so this really struck me because, first of all, I'm not used to this kind of way of life because I grew up in America. My parents are Chinese, but I grew up in a quite American fashion and had a lot of freedom and solitude. Um, so by living in the village, I felt like I could by spending time in the village, I felt like I could see. What it was about the city that initially for the migrants is so traumatic. For, suddenly, you're moving from this group where you've always known everyone to the city where you don't know anyone. You know, and I could see how, you know, there was there was something the migrants always said about the city, which was you can only rely on yourself. And now I realize what that means because in this in the village you have everyone to rely on, and in the city you have no one. But going out also means more freedom. And more privacy for them. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think it brings a lot of loneliness and hardship, certainly, but it also brings them opportunity and choices, which traditionally they did not have so many. I mean, traditionally the idea was、um, to marry young and to have children and to work on the farm.、Um, and now the new idea is you can go out and. You start off as a assembly line worker. You start off as a waitress, or you start off at the lowest level. But you know, a lot of these women are able to move up,、um, and that was one of the things that surprised me was just the level of social mobility inside the factories,、um, which doesn't mean that everyone moves up,、um, but it means a lot of people find ways to learn a little little bit of computer typing skills and become a secretary, and then from there you can become a sales assistant and learn how to do sales.、Um, so there are actually a lot of channels within the factory. For mobility,、um, especially for young women, because a lot of these lower jobs are seen as appropriate for young women, like secretaries, sales assistants, human resources.、Um, ironically, for young men, I think the, the avenues, yeah, the avenues are more narrow. You have a lot of stuff at the bottom, like cooks or drivers, which don't really go anywhere. You can't really move up from being a driver or or a or a security guard, right? I mean, there's not a lot of、uh, movement、mm -hmm. upwards. This causes more difficulty for the girls to find. A boyfriend, you know, who match her level of job or income. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the things I really was curious about: is how do you find a boyfriend or girlfriend? How do you get married in the city? Because in the village, traditionally, you know, people can help you make introductions, or they're matchmakers, or lots of relatives.、Um, but in the city, they kind of have to learn for themselves a lot of things. I mean, even this idea of dating, like that's not traditionally a Chinese idea, right? Where you meet meet someone randomly and then you start dating them. You know, I think that's a very Western idea. But they had to learn how to do this, and I was really curious about the culture of dating in a factory city like Dongguan. So one of the women、um, I write about, Chunming,、uh, she was dealing. She'd already had a more stable job inside different factories, and so she was looking at all sorts of things. You know,、uh, blind dates. You know, through friends, signing up with a dating agency, meeting men online, and then meeting them. You know, all sorts of potentially dangerous <laughs> situations.、Yeah. Um, but you know, she was just pursuing like the most modern ways to find a husband. But at the same time, you know, she comes from a very traditional village, and her her parents are farmers. Her mother actually is illiterate, you know, and and so just to think about the gap between these two worlds, you know, her mother at home on the farm and her going online to meet these guys. Of course, she doesn't tell her mom about this, you know, but just the the distance that she's traveled in the course of a few years is really amazing. And the girls, many of the girls, kind of rebel against the social norms about women in the rural areas. So, what are some other Like general characteristics of the the factory girls.、Um, I think they're very ambitious and aspirational in their own way,、um, which to you or me, you know, having a dream to be a secretary is not necessarily an aspiration. But to someone coming from the rural, from the countryside, with very little education, who has only known farming from her family,、mm -hmm. that's to get what they call you know white collar work is something to be admired and aspire to.、Um, so I actually found that there were these classes that 
taught these young women how to prepare themselves to be white collar workers and I watched these girls gradually learn how to speak and sit and stand and and kind of look the part and then from there they would go and um, do interviews to try to get a higher level job getting off the factory floor so this kind of aspiration um, and desire to improve themselves is really really strong I mean you go to these little bookshops bookstores in Dongguan and they're just full of people, first of all, on the weekends. And second of all, they're full of self-help books, all books about how to improve yourself, how to be Bill Gates, you know, how to make a million dollars, how to improve yourself. You know, they're just endless, endless books like that. So, you know, I think this culture of aspiration and self-improvement is really, really strong in these places.